Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. We are at the Digibury Weekender in Canterbury, in Kent, in the UK. I'm with Vinita Rati, and she gave a fantastic presentation earlier today, um, and I wanted to talk about that with you um, on the Acquia podcast. The Acquia podcast is where I get to talk with people about Drupal, about open source technology, community, and business and I thought you had some really fascinating things to say about business today and especially specifically women in business so Vinita why don't you introduce yourself tell us one thing about who you are and and what you do sure so um, I'm Vinita and uh, I am director of Women Who Code London Chapter. Other than that, um, I also co-founded a technology company called Assist Tango. And then I'm quite involved in different initiatives that we are doing to promote more women, encourage them and come in technology and join like the growing group. So yeah, that's, that's what I am. And um, in terms of like today's talk, I think the only thing that I would want to focus on or like, you know, emphasize on is if you look at the facts, and this is not just a theory, if, if you look at the facts, the, and if you look at the top 20 performing companies, so like top 20% performing companies, you would see that out of them, um, each one of them would have approximately 35 to 40% of women representation. And um, in fact, even like, you know, they would have 20% or 25% very high potential women. Versus if you look at the bottom 20% companies you would find that you see a similar trend in in the on their board members on their women workforce as well the number of women working in those companies are are lesser now does that tell us something i mean i'm not saying that having women on your board would make your company successful but i'm saying it it definitely increases the probability of making the company successful that's how i would project it you had statistics today that indicated that essentially the more women in leadership positions in a company, uh, the better the company performs, the, the yes. more benefit the company derives from that. Yes. And it's a long term story. So I'm not saying this would happen in like a couple of years. No, it's, it's more like looking at 10 years horizon and you would see that difference. The, the other um, fascinating point that you made in your talk was to address something that's been controversial at times, the difference between men and women. Yes. Uh, and men's brains, women's brains, men's experiences, and women's experiences. I would be grateful if you could go through that again for my audience. Sure, sure, definitely. So I always hear that men are probably better in programming because because of their inclination towards mathematics, because, because of they having they having a bigger brain which works faster when solving problems, right? However, I disagree to that in a sense that programming is not just about solving problems. Programming is also about finding out problems because, I mean, the faster you figure out the problem, more efficiently you'll be able to solve it. And scientifically, uh, this is what I, I found in my research, is female brains are faster when coordinating between right brain and left brain. So even though man has a bigger brain, the coordination between right brain and left brain, which is creativity and problem solving skills, is faster in female. And what ha what makes, and what, what basically differentiates female is in the sense that if you have creativity in analyzing the problem, then you're halfway there anyway, and then it's just about solving. So, and, and then it, it really doesn't matter to that 10% bigger brain thing. So, yeah. Right, and in, in, in open source, uh, we now see a contribution as a, as a very broad spectrum of activities. I mm -hmm. think when I got into Drupal um, in 2005, 2006, it was a very developer-focused community and, you know, code was everything. And now we have a group of, of, of every skill set of a, of a sort of a fully rounded 
industry. Right. And contribution now is also defined as um, summarizing issues, mm -hmm. testing right. uh, patches, submitting bugs, writing documentation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there has to be cooperation between every different type. I'm never going to be able to write your patch, no. but I'm actually pretty good at writing bug reports, right? right. So, so we can work together yes. to solve problems. So it's not just that we need all women, you know, teams or all men teams or so, but we need to take need advantage of, of everyone's yes, skills, right? Definitely, definitely. And then if you if you think about the skills that women are usually great at, I would say. We we have we are, we have been known for like you know nurturing relationships right the the value system that we carry with us the emotional stability that usually like a woman has which only improves after they have grow, gone through the phase of motherhood right however at the same time you would have some arguments coming from different areas where you would say that um, women because they are going on on the maternity leaves or like you know um, for for the motherhood. They are usually out of touch they, because they're going out of the industry. They are not really in the touch. And so it makes very difficult for, as for the organization to actually absorb them, to encourage them further because it's, it's commercially not viable. And I have like a different dimension to it. I feel that technology is no more now single coder work. Right? So it's not like a single person work. Technology is now more about teamwork, more about like, you know, bigger teams working on bigger things, doing bigger innovations, and which is where you need all these skills. So, so think about um, a mom, what she has learned in like that four years, five years period. She has, she's now more patient. She, she now knows how to sacrifice. She now has, in fact, more emotional stability. R again, uh, she, she now knows how to nurture relationship, build people. And that's where I say that women are very good at building teams. They are not made for winning the game, but they are more there working behind the scene for building teams, which then at the end of the day win. And, and that's what like, you know, really makes women special. And that's why we really need more women in tech so that we can do more wonderful things than what we're doing today. I love the expression of maternity leave as a business advantage, yeah. right? Um, I think another skill that uh, one learns as a parent um, is prioritization. Yes, that's you know, true. get it done. Yes, a, um, which is which is you know, um, we say in open source, perfection is the enemy of good enough. Yeah. Right. And 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 as a parent myself, um, you know, well, I've got a half an hour in which I can still function today. What is that one thing that will you know, keep the world spinning yes. until tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, that's well said, yes. We're both in agreement that our industry would benefit from more women in technical jobs, mm -hmm. more women in leadership jobs, yes. um, and overall a balance between uh, men and women in companies. How do we get more women into jobs like technology jobs which have been traditionally more male dominated mm -hmm. and people have said and i'm not comfortable with this word exactly but people say oh girls don't like technology yes. technology is not attractive for girls i don't think that's true mm -hmm. but by the same token uh we don't have a 50 50 representation uh, of men and women in tech jobs how can we how can we solve this in a uh, <laughs> How can we solve this? Right. So I have a very different angle to this. I know that women don't really like technology. I know it. Right? I Literally. Okay? Now... I didn't say that. No, I'm saying that. <laughs> now, but I'm bringing a different angle. And the way I'm bringing this is there was an experiment done in London at Southwark School. They wanted to do an experiment and they actually wanted to tell kids that even an unsuccessful experiment can be very fruitful by, just by the things that you learn out of it, right? Now, while doing that experiment, they realized that girls are not very good at accepting failures. They actually take it as a personal rejection. Now, now if I think about it, programming language or computing is all about trial and error, right? So if you, if, if you then start thinking from that dimension, you would, you would feel that isn't that behavior, the natural behavior of girls of not able to absorb rejection is causing some kind of resistance in them taking programming language. It's possible, right? I feel hurt when my code doesn't work and it's because I missed a semicolon somewhere, 
right? I know that feeling. Yeah. So now, when you know that, and if if just think about it, if you have in your character that you just can't take failures, right? You can't take that rejection. Probably, there's like ninety percent of the chance you might even end up saying, "Oh no, I just can't do this." Right? And that's what's happening with girls. And mm. that's the perception that needs to change right in school. That programming or those those like, you know, it, it is okay to fail. It is okay to have some errors. It's it's just about learning and then moving further. So that's one. And then there's another perception that needs to be addressed. I come from a technology background. I'm a programmer, right? My husband is more from communication background, okay? But even then, when it comes to fixing something, right, going out and fixing the car, or even it's just about plumbing, I would usually expect my husband to do it. Why? It's just just the way I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, brought up. It's just the way I've seen it. So, and, and that's the perception that I have developed over the time. And that's what's happening with the girls as well. There's, there's this prevailing thought in the society that programming is all about boys, technology is all about boys, versus the softer things are more for girls. So if you change that perception in school, and the way to do it is, I think there needs to be more education around programming languages. Programming language is not a rocket science. It's, it's just a, another language, just like the way you have English, just like the way you have pen and paper to, to write something, to, to, like, you know, uh, to write a piece of music. That's how you can use a programming language to build things. So the moment you do that, then, then even girls would absorb it just like the way they would absorb English, French, they would absorb Java, C Sharp, C++. Mm. I mean, that's how I see it. So that's, that's the dimension I think now we have to start exploring on how can we have more girls taking in programming languages early on in their like, you know, education um, trajectory. So exposing all children to computer science concepts, yes. programming languages in the right context, you think will naturally produce more women in tech? Yeah. I also wanted to point out while you were talking that this is the developer talking to the marketing communications guy as well. So, so it works, yes. right? Everybody has their own, has their own thing. You are uh, heavily involved in an organization called Women Who Code. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Definitely. So Women Who Code is a global nonprofit organization. And I think our, our sole aim is to just encourage and promote more women in technology. We are aiming that we would connect at least 1 million women in tech by 2019. That's like our first aim right now. We have presence, I think, in about 16 countries now. We have done more than, I think, 900,000 events all over the globe. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a women organization working solely towards promoting and encouraging more women and, and just be an inspiration. Just, just show women we can do it. There's, there's, there's nothing special. Okay, I will definitely link to that. And uh, follow us on WWC London. That's like my uh, Women Who Code London chapter. WWC London. London. Okay, I will do that. I took my 16-year-old daughter and my 14-year-old son to DrupalCon mm -hmm. in Amsterdam recently. And uh, they couldn't attend the whole week, but they've been hearing about technology events all these years. And it was a great opportunity. It's close to where we live. And they had some school off. So I brought them to the Sprint Day. Right. And on the way there, my daughter said, "I next DrupalCon, I want to go to a sprint. Well, we're going to a sprint right now. No, I want to contribute. Oh, wow. So Drupal has a real mentoring culture. And uh, I got her in the door. And in about five minutes, I had a mentor who had loaned her his computer. Right. Somebody else was setting her up with uh, Drupal 8 Beta 1. And she was building a website. And she, she and my son had mentoring the whole day. And um, with, uh, with three or four people from the community. Um, and she found a bug in Drupal 8. Oh, nice. Filed it on Drupal.org and it's been fixed and the patch is, the patch is going to be in Drupal 8. Fantastic. Yeah. So now, she tasted blood. Now, I have a question for you. Tell me about the ratio of women in Drupal, like, you know, group. Drupal, as far as I can tell, has the the, the the best ratio of all the open source projects. Mm -hmm. We count 20 to 25% of the technical side of the community are mm -hmm. women. I believe it's the technical side, 20. So let's say a quarter of the Drupal community is women. And that's pretty 
great compared to some other, other communities. Groups, yeah. um, I can also say that um, I'd like to go and research the number better, but um, you know, Drupal is, is is a very broad community now with designers and marketers and and lawyers and business mm -hmm. people and lots of different flavors of developers. Right. Um, and Drupal is very very open, mm -hmm. very accepting, and we really have this mentoring, teaching, nurturing culture in a lot of ways. And some of my questions to you, I'm actually coming from the position of this feels like a very organic development to me and it feels like a very healthy community to be in most of the time, which is why I'm really interested in your ideas about nurturing people in a natural way so that um, the professions become more balanced over time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I must tell you, nothing is going to change in the next one year. Right. It, it will take time. But what is really needed right now is that effort, which might change things five years down the line. Okay, so let's wrap this up with your call to action. If there's, what, what's something that I can do that technologists, what's something that we can do to help address this imbalance and, and, and make our companies and our industries better and healthier over time? Just become aware that at every workplace, if there are women, they might be going through things which you're not aware of. So just become cognizant of that, start observing, and if there are any things happening around that, then just be proactive and work towards it. I can't tell you how much that women would appreciate you because there's there's another thing about women is they they are they don't really complain that much in a in a way. They would rather take a step back than fighting for it. So I think that's that's the help that they need when they are in a workplace where they are very few in the numbers, they are raised eyebrows, um, when they, they might be going through some double standard rules, it's just that helping hand that they need. And that's it. So you've said to me bef in the past that as a woman in a technology workplace, sometimes you really do have to work twice as hard yes. to get half as much recognition. To address this problem, are you saying in a way that... Um, I could maybe pay twice as much attention to one of my colleagues and help her get that recognition yep. faster and easier? Yes, that's, that, that, that is all. That is all I'm saying. Okay, and it's not because I'm a man, it's just because I'm a colleague. Exactly, exactly. It's just that. I mean, people, people have come to me and asked me questions around positive discrimination. Now, what that is, positive discrimination meaning, like, because there are so many initiatives going on around promoting women, are you getting some advantages because of that, right? Now, I wouldn't say that. I mean, the, it, is, it is possible, but then at the same time, that is the need of the R right now. So, yeah, I mean, even if you see a candidate next to you who's a male, but you see them not getting what they deserve, shout for it. That is it. Okay, so everybody helping everybody. Yes. Pay it forward. That's something I can. That's something I can definitely get on board with. Thank you so much Thanks for so taking much. the time to talk with me. I really, really enjoyed meeting you. I really, really enjoyed your talk. And same here. Same here. I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Same here. We we'll look forward to working together and making this a better place for women. Great. Thank you. Ooh. Fantastic. Nice. That was. <laughs>